There is a saying in Slavic culture, if I may try to translate it, it would sound something like, it tears in where it appears thin. Good afternoon, it's Henry Keen here trying to explain some of the hardest truth in easiest of terms for the whole free world directly from Ukraine today as usual. Continuing the metaphor, you can't expect by putting a blind man behind a wheel that there will be no accident. You can't walk a muddy road without expecting your feet to get dirty. You can't expect a rock to swim. Well, I mean, you can expect all that to happen. However, it is highly unlikely to happen. Like, very highly unlikely. Like, never really. And when instead of your impotent, imaginary benevolence, what actually happens is reality, is a real disaster, well, then all that is left for you is to regret your stupid expectations. On November 16th, an emergency leak of reagents from the first to the second circuit occurred at power unit number five on the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Remember? The one under Russian control, yes. I wonder, could it be because the Russians irresponsibly used Europe's largest nuclear power plant for nuclear blackmail of Ukraine and the world? Hmm? Let's see. The IAEA experts have been informed that the chemical boron has been detected in the secondary cooling circuit of one of the steam generators of reactor unit 5, which is currently in hot shutdown. The site has increased the frequency of boron measurements in the secondary cooling circuit of unit 5. The measurements remain relatively stable and are within the limits permitted by the reactor's technical specifications. IAEA AEA Director General Statement on Situation in Ukraine. There are Ukrainian engineers on ZNPP working under the barrel of a Russian gun right now. Still, the occupiers obviously violate the normal operational mode of the nuclear facility. Could it be because the actions of the Russian personnel at the ZNPP are completely incompetent? Or maybe. Or maybe Russians just want the disaster to happen. Maybe the world will finally see this time. Disaster is the Russian way. After all, this is the second accident at the facility in three days. Anyway, in purpose or not, these Russian ways can lead to the loss of the integrity of the steam generator pipes and as so to a way, way, way larger scale emergency. We in Ukraine say what we have been saying since when the Russian occupies the NPP. The only way to prevent a coming catastrophe is to force the Russian forces to leave the nuclear plant as soon as possible and restore Ukraine's control, and that means an unhindered access of ZMPP of the International Atomic Agency. Oh, uh, there is another way. Let's just do what high-ranking officials are doing now in Europe, sit and express their deepest concerns and wait until we all see what the abomination of European political impotence and Russian nuclear terror would result in. Based on what is going on at the ZNPP today, it should not be a long wait anyway. On November 16th, to avoid a shutdown, the US Senate passed a temporary budget that does not include items on aid for Ukraine and Israel. Like it or not, Ukraine's victory is a matter of US national security and to achieve it, Ukraine needs continued aid, both military and direct budgetary, energy, humanitarian, etc. etc. We understand. The bare fact that Ukraine is not included in the interim budget does not mean the U.S. refuses to support our country, no. On the contrary, the Senate needs more time to discuss our growing necessities, so the logic is obvious. The same applies to Israel, which the U.S. systematically helps as an ally. The president has put forward a package for a significant amount of money for Ukraine, uh, over $60 billion. And... Based on my conversations, I can say I have full confidence in our president, in our Congress, and in the American people in the fact that there is strong bipartisan support for Ukraine. So our process uh, will play itself out, but I'm feeling encouraged based on my conversations in Washington. The nature of the adopted interim document as such did not foresee the inclusion of any additional issues except for those that continued spending at the level of last year. As so having more time now, the US Congress is debating an annual support program for Ukraine instead of short-term packages, which is good for Ukraine. The United States Department of Defense has called on Congress to pass a request for additional funding that includes aid to Ukraine and Israel in one package and as soon as possible. 
Some say on oh, that's a lot of money. Indeed, victory is a costly thing, sure. I'm just here to remind you, and anyone who has a sound mind and a common sense to comprehend reality as it is, Ukraine is already paying the highest price there is. Lives of our people every single day. So please, uh, remember, next time you're going to, when sitting at your computer on your comfortable couch, watching UATV English and complaining how expensive the war is, the war that someone else is fighting instead of you, for you, and the human values that you say you share. Since November 6th, the strike of Polish truckers has been going on for them to block the way for lorries on the border with Ukraine. In 10 days on November 16, a similar action was also announced by the Associations of Motor Carriers of Slovakia. The reason for the strike is simple and obvious, a competition on the EU trucking market that is simply failing to compete with more flexible and pricing in terms of Ukrainian one. Since the competition is lost, the blockade of roads is nothing but a desperate attempt of blackmail because it causes huge economic losses to Ukraine in conditions when all the forces of the state are directed at war needs, namely repelling Russian aggression. The strike is hurting not only Ukraine, but Poland as well, obviously overloading the neighboring country's logistics and harming a number of industries. The Polish government does not support the strikers and is trying to resolve the crisis situation at the border. We hope it will happen as soon as possible. We remember that Ukraine, together with Poland, was able to overcome the crisis of exports of agricultural products and not only hopes, but knows it for sure. We will find a positive solution for both sides, simply because we both have no choice. Time for more on your of English. And now the question of the week. It was asked by Great Bony Wanker, whatever that means. If Putin dies tomorrow, do the Russians continue their special operation to undermine the Russian economy by attacking their cousins? Cousins. It's us, right? Well, that's another question and a long story. So let's return to the first part of the question. Well, if Putin dies tomorrow, what happens? Will the war stop? Well, if Putin dies tomorrow, no matter how I love, how it sounds, nothing changes. Because believe it or not, Russian nation in its vast majority seems to love that feeling like it is flying on a death star with Darth Vader as a skipper. The very fact that both the Death Star and Darth Putin, oh sorry, Vader, were destroyed in the end of the story matters not too much to our Russian neighbors. They really do believe this war is righteous for them. And they really do not believe Butcher happened in Ukraine. There are quite famous and internationally renowned actors and writers in Russia who are happy to see Odessa bombed. So don't be fooled. Putin is not alone. There's a whole army of Russians who gave him the keys to the castle, blessing him to continue his usurp reign. There is nothing more I want than to be wrong at it, but it seems that I'm right. And one more thing. If Putin dies tomorrow, Russians will go for a new Tsar or directly to big Russian mess, a civil war, yes. However, let us all wait until tomorrow. If Putin dies tomorrow, we all see what happens then. It was me, Henry Keane, breaking the hard truth in easy terms. I hope for you in our weekly wrap-up, please find a moment to like, comment and subscribe. Let us know what you think. Your opinion matters. Ask us an interesting question and next time in our weekly episode, I'll do my best to answer it in an interesting way, I hope. Stay safe and tune for more on your English.